Hey guys, my name's Dale, and you're watching Think Fact. You are one of a kind. Never before have you existed in time until now. But what is it about you that makes you you, out of all the people that have ever existed. So here's my personal interpretation of it, and let's have some fun and investigate. You are one. One out of seven billion people alive today. One out of a hundred billion people that have existed in the past 50,000 years. You are many. An individual that was made out of 50 trillion cells. An individual that is made of almost eight octillion atoms. Even though they tend to completely be replaced with new atoms in a time span of about five years. You have a blueprint. Your DNA contains the entire blueprint on how to make you. I mean, if you were to put it in a straight line, it would be six feet tall or almost two meters. But are these you? Is DNA you? Well, DNA is obviously not conscious. And obviously the blueprint is not the product. It's just information. Six feet of information in this case. Information on how to make everything from your hair to your heart. And even your brain. And here I think we're getting a little warmer. Your brain consists of over a hundred billion cells, all of which are independent living things making one conscious individual. You. That would be like if all the people in the past 50,000 years were working together and what we worked together to make had a single mind of its own. I must say that's pretty interesting. I mean your brain is your door to the world. It keeps you alive by being in charge of systems that are below your consciousness. Known as your autonomic nervous system, which kind of sounds like automatic, it is in charge of keeping your heart going, your digestive system running, activating sexual arousal, dilating your pupils, and much more. I mean, it is so cool that it takes over your breathing when you forget about it. Your autonomic nervous system has got your back. But beyond that, your brain helps you interpret your surroundings, and it does that through your senses. In this case, consider your senses keys. And even though some of us don't have all the keys, that doesn't mean we can't interpret the world in our own way through what we do have access to. Like if someone is blind, they can still use their other senses to interpret how the world is. This then leads into the concept of nature versus nurture. What you are naturally going to be like, say through genetics, versus what you are going to be like due to how your environment influences you. Now, if you were to have grown up in the country or the big city streets, you would most likely have two very different personalities depending on which one you were raised in due to how those environments impacted you. But there are things your environment most likely wouldn't impact, like let's say your brain interprets the taste of cinnamon buns to be the best thing in in the entire world. Odds are, it would most likely not matter whether you were raised in the country or the big city. If you love cinnamon buns, you're gonna like cinnamon buns no matter where you're born. Your environment impacts the person you are. Nature or your genetics impacts the way you interpret the world. And that's why people with psychological disorders have a hard time interpreting the world because they just can't connect. And they do need help. That said, no matter if you grew up on the streets or in the country, you still would be you. As said, you would most likely have a very different personality, but it would still be you who is inhabiting your body. I mean, we all have had that moment, whether it's memorable or not, but some people call it turning on. That moment when you realized everything around you exists. You exist. That is you. And the placement of everything in your brain and the ability for it to have a conscious made you possible. But is your consciousness locked to your body. I mean, your DNA is a blueprint on how to make your body, and your brain is a bunch of chemicals and lobes working together. But even with that, does that mean you are the only person who could have ever been in your body? Could it have been someone different than you who could have been in charge of your body, despite the way your brain is naturally put together? I would personally say, yes, it could have been someone else. I bring this up because of the concept of cloning. If you were to clone yourself, you would not share consciousness with that clone, even if it's literally a perfect replica of you, with a brain that is constructed and put together exactly like yours. But even with that, it's gonna have its own consciousness. Though it would be cool, you're not gonna be controlling both bodies, because that's not gonna happen. And all of this brings me to my last point. 
I thought of all of this while thinking about the simple idea of teleportation. The process of making an exact copy of you with all your memories and ideas and your personality and moving it to an entirely new location. Breaking your body down and completely re-establishing it in a new area. But who is to say that body will have your consciousness within it? Chances are that body is going to have a consciousness that is not you. Because if you're being teleported, your body isn't physically being transferred. Your body would be destroyed while just sending the information on how to make you to a new location and then constructing you out of completely new material, new atoms. But what if you're not broken down and it's just your information that is sent and a clone, a teleportation per se, of you is still created at the other end? What if that information is sent to multiple areas? There would be multiple yous, meaning they all would obviously have their own consciousness with your personality and all your memories, but it wouldn't be you. So what makes you, you? It's your consciousness, as simple as that may sound. Some people would call it a soul. Some people would call it nothing more than chemical reactions. Could it be downloaded and saved? I would say not, because in all reality, your consciousness is locked in your brain. Without that, nothing makes you. Any number of different consciousnesses could have inhabited your body, only that it would so happen to be you that was the one that turned on. Whew, okay, um, somebody get a ladder, it's just gotten pretty darn deep. So I thought this would be a fun concept to tackle. I haven't really seen anybody try to put a scientific understanding on this in a video. And I hope you guys enjoyed my interpretation of what is it that makes you. And most of all, I would love to hear what you guys have to think on this. Please feel free to share your own interpretations. I mean, this is a place where we gotta share information and I think it's great that we can discuss different concepts about what truly is it that makes us us. And I hope I gave you guys something kind of fun to think about. So with all that said, my question for you guys is, and mainly for the people who don't want to get all philosophical because this is pretty deep, what would you say is something that is unique about you and makes you stick out from the crowd? And with all that said, my name's Dale, this is Think Fact, and never stop learning and thinking in this case. If you like this video, please make sure to stay in tune for more. Stay in tune for more facts and thoughts that almost everybody missed.